Thanks for joining us for this episode. And I want to let you know about an opportunity that we host every month as part of Church Advance. It's the Church Advance Hour of Encouragement. Now, this is something, again, that we do every month. And it's actually very often content that later gets featured on the podcast. So during this time, Brian's going to have a kind of a teaching session, and then he's going to open it up for discussion and questions. And then many times we close out the hour in prayer. And it really is an encouraging time for pastors and church leaders. And it's free for anyone who wants to join. And so I want to encourage you to have part in our next hour of encouragement. And if you want to learn more and get signed up again, it's completely free. Just head over to briansams.com and get registered for the next Church Advance Hour of Encouragement. That's briansams.com. Well, thanks so much again for joining us for this episode as we continue to advance a reformation of fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches. This is Church Advance with Brian Sams. So those are that's how I fit the blocks, but I don't work in I don't work in little segments. I work in blocks. And it helps me group work together and get work accomplished more easily. Yeah, and so uh, you know you you hear about blocking, time blocking, um, and you know I think the way you walked through that is very practical. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna just interject, you know, in relation to. Uh, you know, I would classify myself again as as a, a solopreneur. I have some, you know, subcontractors that help me with different things that I do. But as far as my business, there's I don't have any full time employees other than myself, um, and so I do have uh, responsibilities uh, in terms of uh, a, 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 what I'm saying is a handful of different responsibilities. And so what I find mm-hmm. is that. Um, for me, and I'm, I'm saying I'm giving this because maybe this experience relates a little bit to that, like we talked about earlier, that pastor who maybe he is a one man band, you have to do it all. Uh, mm-hmm. And maybe you don't have because Brian, I think you would probably agree a lot of the reason you're able to set up the workflow you have is because you do have maybe more people to delegate uh, some of the busy work off to. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I would, uh, I would say that that a lot of people don't have that luxury. But the time blocking principle stands still because something, again, for me, an example, I have different, I have subcontractors to help me with different projects for a church's website, design, things like that. But I still have to manage the overall production and project of making sure they're done and communicating with the, the client and things like that. So for me, I have just dailies. I have day, I, I have a, a, a recurring task daily uh, of certain things that I have to do every day. You know, I have to check in on my accounts. I have to, like we talked about earlier, uh, get in my email and respond and process the email. And so I have a, I have a block for the daily stuff that I have to do. Like I just have to do that mm. every day. And then I'm able to move into some of those more dedicated blocks of maybe some content development, editing, uh, you know, video and podcast content and things like that that. Uh, And so, yeah, this idea though, in general of blocking, it comes down to uh, really, it it links back in with the email concept of you just have to have blocks where you're doing the work. Uh, Don't, the worst thing you can do is have your email open all day, for example, and just have a constant to-do list that's constantly changing and growing. I used to operate that way. It's miserable. Yeah. That's living under the dictatorship of somebody else. That's given that's given the reins of your life and time to other people. And, 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 and it's kind of like your money, Luke. Uh, I think this is a great illustration of this. If you're doing money right, like finances, you assign your money tasks. Mm. Uh, Dave Ramsey talked about this, assigning every dollar a responsibility in your budget. Well, we budget our time, right? Yeah. Well, well budgeting, budgeting your life is the same thing. You're assigning minutes to tasks. You're not being overtaken by tasks dictating what you do you are in demand when you do this and I, man that's the way to live it's the way to live financially and it's the way to live uh in, in your schedule as well and then and then this next thing man number six this is this is super critical and that that this should be obvious uh but rest and sabbath must be both regular mm. and rhythmic 
Okay. When I say rest, the difference between rest, rest and Sabbath is Sabbath is actual time off. Rest is just retreating, sleeping, exercising, whatever. Let me say a couple things about this. There is no excuse ever to not take a day off of work. Okay. There is no excuse. I take Saturdays off because I have a family that goes to school. If I were to take Mondays off, I would never see my kids. Yeah. Okay. But I take Saturdays off and you're like, well, how do you get ready for Sunday? Well, I, I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs> I get ready for Sunday well in advance of uh, Saturday. So if I'm, if I'm preparing sermons and stuff on Saturday, I'm all messed up anyway. So I, I just can't touch that right now. Uh, there's no excuse for not taking a family vacation. Okay. So let me, let me talk a little bit about some of my regular rhythmic rest and Sabbath. Okay, let, let me start with Angie, me and Angie. Uh, me and Angie have a time where we talk every day. Uh, even if I'm traveling, we talk every day, uh, just about life catching up. Number two, we're going to date every week, at least once a week. And it may be bigger, it may be smaller, it may be McDonald's, it may be Fogo to Chow, it may be coffee, it may be iced tea, it may be driving <laughs> driving just somewhere in our neighborhood and just parking and being away from our house. Yeah. But we go away on a date where it's just her and I. And then of course we depart quarterly, meaning we do at least do an overnight or once a quarter. And so Angie and I will do that. We do that. Actually, we got one coming up in three weeks. And then I want to talk about my vacations uh, just for a minute. I take one full week of vacation every year with my whole family. I'm talking about my kids. Uh, and that there's all kinds of variety of things that we can do there. This year we're doing Universal Studios in Orlando. Then I do another additional full week with just Angie. Mm. And this year I'm doing that uh, again in the Caribbean. So, uh, it, 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 it can, you know, whatever. Let me tell you what's not always a great vacation is um, spending your entire two weeks of vacation with your extended family. Yeah. And going to see your mom or your dad yeah. You know, I mean, look, those things can be draining if you're not careful. Uh, depending on how many weeks of work you get off, I have three weeks, so I have a flex week where I might do a little bit of both. I might do some other things. But, but guys, you've got to take vacation with your family. It's such a priority, and and you've got to take a regular day off. You've got to take uh, you've got to take regular vacation. And I would even say there are seasons in which you need to maybe take an extra day or two depending on what your schedule has dictated for you. As an example, after the Church Advance Conference in February, my whole team took an extra day off the next week. Mm -hmm. This coming week, um, after Easter, after the Spanish church plant, after this hectic week, or excuse me, season of ministry, we're not even having a staff meeting next week. We're taking an extra day off. I'm going to fish twice next week uh, because I need regular and rhythmic rest and Sabbath and, and man, you got to do it. Or you're going to, you're going to, you're going to deteriorate that. Yeah. And let me, let me throw this out there for those of you out there that are lead pastors uh, or leaders in general uh, that are leading a, a church or an organization where uh, you, you know, you have others working under you. Uh, what you just said, Brian, about not just giving yourself this time off, but giving others uh, that work for you that are under your leadership that time off. Being conscious of things like what you said, Easter is a busy week for any church and any staff uh, at a church. And uh, just being conscious of saying, oh yeah, you probably have worked 40, 50 plus hours this past week, uh, if not way more. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to give you, I think the least you can do is give an extra day off the following week. Uh, you know, as you're coming into, you know, maybe, maybe you can't do that for everybody all the time, but you know, you finish a week of vacation Bible school, give your children's pastor an extra day off, you know, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to throw that out there too, as this, this rest is not just for you, but for those under your care and under your leadership. Yeah. And if you're, if you're a lead pastor, let me just encourage you about something. Don't be so sticky about, look, this is not corporate America, people. Yeah. We do not have to accumulate personal days. We, ha we have to have enough sense to look at a man on our team who's run down and say, hey, you're taking next week off. Yeah, uh, I've done that before. I forced Aaron Chan, as an example, to take a whole week off after a certain time. I've told Eric McKay, who was our youth student pastor, 
uh, I said, hey, you're taking three days off. You can't come in. You can't call me. I want you to take some rest. You're not going to youth camp this summer. I'm taking them because I think you need a break. You know, and things like that. You've got to be sensitive to that. Uh, I had one guy tell me one time his grandmother passed away, and he told his pastor that. And this was the first response, the first response of the pastor to his employee, employee, which is part of the problem, um, mm-hmm. is uh, – well, make sure you mark it off as a personal day. I'm like, that's not the response. Yeah. That's not ministry response. Ministry is enough sense to know the needs of people and care more about the person than the productivity. Yep. But but beyond that, you've got to have enough of that yourself. Mm-hmm. Like like another thing we do with our team. Man, good night. We don't make our team come in the week of Christmas. Like offices close at noon the day before Christmas. No, they don't. Look, man, I'm not I'm not even counting that as vacation time. Yeah. They're gonna get. They're gonna get Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, sometimes even a day or two additionally to spend. If 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 I've got a staff member that needs to fly to see family member during Christmas or Thanksgiving, I'm not gonna count that as their vacation. I'm just gonna let them go. Uh, any any what we would call significant major holidays, we're not gonna force our staff to come in and work while the rest of the world has the day off. You know, those kinds of things are just extra things that we do to make rest and Sabbath consistent and rhythmic with yeah. our team. Yeah. And, you know, I, again, I don't want to get on this too much in terms of uh, get on the soapbox or whatever. But, yeah, I, I think it's worthy repeating, like, uh, the church, your church is not corporate America. Uh, again, we're speaking specifically to those who do have, you know, those that they lead out there. Um, but it's not. And you, you know, I know that there's this certain, I'm not saying it needs to be a chaotic free for all. I understand the purpose of, you know, the HR role and, and, and things like that. But the truth is, cause I, you know, I've had this discussion with people in the past is, you know, they say, well, if we don't, if we don't set some, you know, some regulations and some policies and procedure, people will do this and they'll abuse it or whatever. And my thought is always, then you hired the wrong people. You know? That's exactly, well, Hey man, Hey, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and put a plug in for one of our next upcoming episodes. I'm getting ready to talk about when it is time to hire. And I'm going to talk about some of these things. And uh, man, you're exactly right, Luke. This is one of the problems with the mega church is it becomes a place of employment, yep. not a place of ministry. And and pastors become staff members, not pastors. Mm-hmm. And it become and and it, look it look it. I was out and uh, look. I was at a. Uh, I went to lunch with a mega pastor, a mega church pastor, mega pastor, <laughs> a, mega, <laughs> a mega a mega church pastor here in Jacksonville. And we sat down at this restaurant. Really nice guy. Really appreciate him taking the time to, to even meet with me. And the waitress comes by and he 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 invites her to church, which I thought was admirable. And she she said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I I go there. I'm an intern." And I thought to myself, "This guy doesn't even know. Wow. He doesn't know his interns. He doesn't know. He probably doesn't know half his people. And and and, and when when that's going on, you're you're guarantee you you're going to hire some wrong people. You're going to make some mistakes. That's not a culture of ministry. That's a businessman." And uh, that's a complete fail. That's a whole, but we're going to talk about that next time. Yeah. yeah. So let me get to number seven here. Let me get to number seven. Have a daily quote unquote minute retreat. For me, I take a minimum of 10 minutes a day to just sit in silence and think. Mm. That's it. Sometimes it's more than that. And I will think with a notebook and a pen or again, I don't want to do it with electronics because I'll get distracted. I'm just going to sit. Sometimes my secretary will walk in and I'm, I have a couch in my office. I'll just sit there. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm just staring and I'm just thinking. And I'll just say, yeah, I'm just having one of those minutes where I'm just, where I'm just thinking. You got to have time to reflect, think, um, de- uh, uh, what's, what's the word? debrief, yeah. debrief your life, unpack what's going on. Think through the things that you said you're going to do that you need to do. Create list, just be silent. That has become a game changer for me. Sit in silence for at least 10 minutes a day, ready to record whatever thoughts come to your mind, which leads me to number eight. I'm, these couple ones I'm kind of burning through kind of quick because they're, this is good. Re- retreat, number eight, retreat regularly to scripture and prayer. Mm. Somebody told me this, that Billy Graham always had an open Bible on his desk. And I started doing that. Mm. I just have a Bible. The only place it is is on my desk. It's not moving. It's always going to be there. And I just am going to consistently read. I also um, am listening to the Bible 
on an app regularly. Now, first thing I did this morning when I woke up, I, I wasn't even out of bed yet. I listened to three chapters of the Bible, sitting there just kind of thinking through scripture this morning. I want to just constantly be doing, I'm not talking about devotions here. That's a whole another conversation. I'm talking about just, man, I need some scripture right now. Yeah, yeah. I need to stop and pray about some things right now. That's how you create solitude and productivity in your life. You're retreating regularly to that. Uh, Luke, I, I, the last two that I have are about family <clears throat> because these two things really fit the conversation of solitude and productivity. Uh, you got to have the right kind of rhythms in your family mm. uh, or you're not, you're not going to do well. Right. In, in fact, I would say this, <clears throat> if you are doing productivity well, but you're doing family poorly, you, you've, you've, you've missed, you've missed it. So mm. how do we do this at home? Number nine, we make sure to create solitude in our family. Okay. I have five kids, guys. Do you know how hard it is to have solitude and peace when you have five kids ages 15 to two? Okay. I have a five-year-old, four-year-old, and two-year-old all at the same time. And I'm also 44 years old. So that happened kind of later in, in the game. <laughs> what this means for us is our kids have either bedtime, quiet time, or reading time much earlier than me and my wife were going to retire. Hmm. So, so we give ourselves at least an hour or two each evening that's just me and Angie or just me or just Angie. Sometimes she might need to go to bed early. Sometimes I might need to go to bed early. But you see the space it gives us? So I come home from work. I'm busy. I'm in ministry. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing. I'm working with people. Then I got to come right home and engage again in family. I've got to give myself some personal time. And uh, I do that in the evening. So I create solitude in my family life by, by, by not allowing my children to be in our, this sounds terrible, be in our vicinity 24-7. Yeah, yeah. They're going to go have personal time. They're going to have reading time. They're going to have time in their beds or reading books or watching a show or going to bed early. Our kids go to bed early, and we're not ashamed of that. They do not dominate. They cannot dominate uh, the you know our, our time in the sense of time that me and Angie need, et cetera. So that's important. And then the final thing, and then Luke, I'll take any any kind of feedback you got on these these last few. I trade off responsibilities to give uh, my spouse or she does with me extra rest. Okay, meaning I need to know whenever we've been pushing it, we've been burning it, and when I need to step in and give my wife extra rest so that we can be better for each other. So a lot of times this happens because I'll just know she's just exhausted or hasn't feeling well. So the other day I came and grabbed all the kids the small ones and took them to McDonald's. And then I took them to pick the kids who were in school up from school. And then I took those kids around and got everybody, you know, some kind of, some kind of, I think we did, I think we did a Sonic drink, you know, half price Sonic drink. Well, the whole scope of the time was about two hours. So I gave Angie two hours to rest mm. so that when we got back, we could engage again. So it's just another rhythm that you can create that creates more rest, solitude, and peace there for yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, this has been some solid stuff. I mean, we've got, I mean, 10 practical points and a lot of, like we said, we're, we're trying to give a lot of why behind the what. Um, and I'm just going to throw this out there in general. That, that's something that I, I do like about kind of our approach and your approach to, to what we do in the podcast here is it's, it's not just about one or the other. Uh, it's about both um, because you, you get really focused on maybe the philosophy uh, and then you're just doing a lot of talking, a lot of talking, a lot of thinking, a lot of, you know, yeah, philosophizing, you know, if you will, if that's even a word. All mm. right. But then if you get to, I'm not sure if yeah. it is or not, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but then you get, can get too focused on the practical and the doing part of it. And you do, and you say, I'm going to do this and whatever. And either because you never grasp the why and the reason behind it, it doesn't stick 
or you just get so consumed with the doing and the practical side of it that uh, you forget you do forget why you're doing it and, and it kind of becomes you know somewhat meaningless and so that is what I like about the approach to this entire conversation here is that it's not just here's why we're doing it and but here's some actual practical steps uh, that you can take mm-hmm. uh, to to uh, to actually you know kind of take back some of your time eliminate that noise uh, and ultimately uh, just live because that's the thing Brian is it's about this really you you implement some of this into your life and you you do find yourself living a much more peaceful joyful and fulfilled life and like I said way mm-hmm. back at the beginning of this conversation uh, from my own personal experience uh, you just you do even find yourself, you say, I'm getting, I'm accomplishing more with my life, but I'm actually somehow doing that while doing less. Uh, and that's exactly right. Th- that's exactly right. But, uh, but and think about this. I, I, let me give, let me give, just find a word here. What did, what did people do before all this media and all these distractions? Mm. People lived peaceful and, and, and I mean, think about, think about Luke. I know, I know we could drag this out forever, but think about the rise of anxiety and depression, loneliness, suicide. All these things are because of the clouded crowding hmm. and the busyness and the lack of depth in relationships, all of which comes because we are disturbed and distracted. And so, guys, let's rethink some of these things. And if I can ever help you with that, man, send me an email, send me a phone call. I'd love to help you work on some strategy to eliminate some of these things from your own personal life. God bless you guys. It was great to have you join us for this episode. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any upcoming content, you're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and that you follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you enjoy this content, then please don't hesitate to leave us that five-star review. And then also tell other church leaders and pastors about this podcast. We would really appreciate you helping us spread the word. This podcast is hosted by Brian Sams. It's produced by myself, Luke Clayton, and my team at mustincrease.com. We really look forward to having you join us in the next episode as we continue to advance a reformation, a fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches right here on Church Advance with Brian Sams. Thank you.